Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and we are here to talk about chillers. Uh, let's dig into it. Let's talk about the hoses that are that are required for for use. First uh, option for hoses on our spindle kits is basically this um, polyethylene. It's good for its purpose. However, many of the hobby CNC market does not like it because it doesn't fit into cable chains uh, very nicely. Um, you'll notice that it's very stiff hose um, and bending it over you can get pretty deep without actually pinching off the flow so this stuff is good um, but we do have some better options so I really wanted some clear tubing that was really nice high quality um, so I went looking around and I found an American company who produces this and then they referred me to a distributor um, which I was able to purchase so this clear tubing right here is called Super Thain Ether. This stuff is awesome. It, uh, it has a very high um, tolerance for cable chains. It's very flexible compared to the, uh, to the other stuff. See, this stuff is pretty hard. And it's really hard to see um, in, 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 in hand. If you want a sample, just, just reach out and I can provide you samples of all three of our hoses here so you can see what it's like in, in person. But, this hose is very flexible. It's perfect for cable chains. Um, it's strong so that even whenever it bends over, it will not pinch off the coolant flow, which is extremely important. It's perfectly clear so you can see the material. If you want to use um, uh, a special color uh, coolant or whatnot, you can do that with this. This is the perfect, um, perfect material for that. Then, because of popular demand, um, especially because of the cable clips uh, that Rowdy Roman uh, produces for attaching hoses to cable chains, uh, most of his experience has probably been with this stuff right here. Um, I haven't heard any reports of people using it with, with the Super Thane Ether, um, but the same company, the same American company that makes uh, the Super Thane Ether also makes silicon. So he, we've got some silicon tubing here, and you'll notice this is much more flexible and stretchable. The other stuff is not stretchable at all. Um, but the problem is when it gets too far, you notice it starts to bend. It bends at that spot. That could pinch off the coolant flow, which is why I didn't initially stock it. But we sell each of these by the foot um, on our website if you'd like to purchase it that way. By default, our spindle kits come with 30 feet. It's 30 foot with the spindle kit. Um, if you buy another 10 feet, I'll send you a 40 foot length and then you can cut it in half and have 220s. Um, or if you want more or whatnot, we do have it stocked right there on the website. It's the exact same stuff we ship with the spindle kits um, with those cooling systems that are, that are added on there. But all of these options um, are really good. They have pot pluses and negatives, uh, minuses, but um, yeah. Silicon has been the most popular by far ever since we started introducing it. And we have tons of stock um, available for that, as well as the, uh, the Super Thane Ether. We have plenty of that stuff. And yes, we still have plenty of the other stuff as well. So uh, yeah, let's talk about chillers a little bit more. Um, so we've got chillers, which we just got in a huge batch of these. Um, these are now available for sale. Um, for immediate shipping. Um, we do have some uh, a, a neat little upgrade for that and I'll talk about that later. But for now, let's talk about the option that we've had up until now. So up until now, our water-cooled spindle kits have all come with a pond pump. That's what this is right here. What you do is you get a, a five gallon bucket. There's some uh, suction feet at the bottom of this in, in the baggie that you can throw on the bottom of the, uh, of the pond pump. Pop it down on the bottom the intake, it sucks in the coolant that it is sitting in through, this, through, the, through the opening right here, and then it pumps it out through a, through a uh, port. And there's a nipple on here that you can add onto the top, which allows you to plug in your hose. Um, and that is the out, so that, that's going out to the motor. And then the other tube just basically sits in the reservoir um, so that whenever it pumps it out, goes through the motor, then in, back through the return, 
and then it just drops right back down in the reservoir. The cooling that occurs, um, so basically whenever it's, it's in the reservoir, it gets pumped over to the motor, the motor heats it up because obviously the mo motor is getting hot. So the, the heat transfers over to the coolant is the desire. Then it gets returned back to the reservoir. The reservoir then it, it's big. So it's usually about two or three gallons. Um, of, I personally use um, um, window washer fluid, just straight window washer fluid. It's like a dollar at Walmart um, per gallon. So I usually buy three of those, pour all that into a, a bucket, drop this down into it and allow that to uh, do the cooling. The main goal of the coolant is to prevent um, growths from happening in the coolant. You, st you still wanna change your coolant um, on, a, on an annual basis, at least, um, just to keep everything fresh and clean. But otherwise, you just want stuff preventing from growing. But depending on your climate, you may need something a little stronger. So down here in the south, um, the window washer fluid is perfectly sufficient, um, but if you're further north, like up in Maine or Wisconsin or someplace up, up in the northern states um, or up in Canada, you probably want something a little stronger. Uh, many people would suggest um, a one to four or one to three ratio of um, antifreeze, just regular car antifreeze. Um, some people have even gone as far as RV antifreeze. It's, it's up to you, depending on your climate, depending on your area, you may have different needs pipe up in the uh, users group. Um, there's many discussions. You can ask where people are from, what system, what coolant mixes they're using. Um, that's a great idea to get an idea of where you are compared to where someone else is and what they're mixing. At my garage, it's a condition, so it's heated and cooled uh, depending on the season, and therefore window washer fluid is perfectly sufficient. If your garage is heated and cooled, same thing. Don't worry about it. Just throw some window washer fluid. It's real cheap and allow it to uh, do the pumping. So the, the pond pump is the, is the basic option, right? That's, that's the cheapest option available. The hoses are about $30 and the pond pump is about 20. So we, I think this kit is about $50 for the, for the cooling system. So that is the pond pump. Now, we have done lots of research to figure out what's really good and what's really bad. And what we've decided on is to recommend, um, so you're either using the pond pump or what's better than that, the chiller. So this is a CW3000 chiller. It is basically a, a big reservoir, um, which hold um, nine liters of um, coolant. And it will basically pump it through a series of um, aluminum tubes, which has a fan blowing on those tubes. So this is more of an, this is more of a, um, it's still a passive chiller in the fact that there's no active refrigerant in it. So this is a CW3000. There is a CW5000 and a 5500, I believe. Um, those are usually for CO2 lasers. Those need real, those need to be brought down in temperature. Um, but, the, and, if you're using those, it's probably fine so long as you set the temperature to like um, to um, ambient temperature. It, it, you, you're fine to use that, but it is overkill. I will tell you that. Um, I'm not opposed to overkill. Dominate it, right? So um, the CW3000 will definitely bring it down to room temperature because it's blowing that fan, blowing whatever room air is on it over those tubes. And that gets pumped out to your, your spindle motor, and then the return brings it right back in, right, drops it right in into the reservoir, and then back through the pump. So basically, this is a very fancy pond pump um, and bucket combined, <laughs> right, with a fan attached to it. Now, the nice thing about these things, they also have an alarm. We will be coming out with a cable later, which will end and the inlet so that you can see exactly how to wire it into your, if you have a Maso controller, for example, um, they have a coolant alarm capability, which will let you know whether the coolant, whether the chiller is actually working or not. Um, and it will actually pause and feed hold your CNC machine if necessary. But we will come out with a cable for that later. Um, but for now, we're just going to get these things out there so that everybody can actually utilize them. There is an audible alarm if the coolant is not flowing. So don't worry, you're not 
out there in the wind. Um, there's no need to bring the alarm signal into the Masso, but we will work on that and bring that option available and we'll keep it, um, it's just gonna be a cable, so it's gonna be real cheap. But um, for now, let's, uh, let's open this up. Let's take a look at it. All right, here we are with the chiller um, opened and exposed. We basically got our reservoir. We have our little buzzer as well as the pond pump um, or equivalent to it uh, down here in the bottom. We've got a flow regulator which or flow uh, sensor which lets us know whether the coolant is actually flowing in the system. And of course our fan back here in the back, the fan sucks in, blows through these aluminum tubes which is coming in from the inlet and all the hot water uh, basically flows through that and then into the reservoir. The fan blows over those tubes, dissipating the heat, and so that by the time it gets to the reservoir, it should be cooled down enough for the pond pump, uh, the pump to pick it up, suck it in, and blow it back through to the motor. Um, all of this electronics is basically wired directly into our uh, sensor here, which is actually a temperature gauge, and of course the uh, flip switch and that sort of thing is all kind of wired in right there. We do have an alarm output, which we are not utilizing at the moment, but we will come out with a cable that plugs this into the Masso so that the Masso knows um, whether the alarm is going off, whether the, the chiller is having problems. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below or reach out to us at support at pwncnc.com, and I'm happy to help. And I've got an awesome team behind me now. We've uh, got Jeff and Chris and Clinton all of us are willing and able to help you on, on the support tickets, so be sure to reach out. We've got we're, Our team is growing, our company is growing, and it's all because of you guys. And we really appreciate your support um, and continued purchasing and your ideas and feedback. We love it. Keep it coming. But remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it. But don't just... Mm-hmm. <laughs>